Let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Jesus, through the immaculate heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys and sufferings on this day for all the intentions of your sacred heart in union with the holy sacrifice of the Mass throughout the world in reparation for my sins, for the intentions of all my relatives and friends, and in particular for the intentions of the Holy Father. Amen. The Intentions of the Holy Father for the month of March For Victims of Abuse We pray for those who have suffered harm from members of the Church. May they find within the Church herself a concrete response to their pain and suffering. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear friends, as we gather together to pray to the Lord, as we have gathered to spend this time with Jesus, let us offer to the Lord all our worries, all our difficulties. Let us place at His feet everything that troubles us, the tensions, the doubts, the challenges that we may have in our lives. Because it is only He who can give us the grace to face these challenges in life. At the same time, as we spend this time with Jesus, let us try to listen to what the Lord is telling us today. Sometimes we get occupied with our work, we are so engrossed in our activities that we are not able to listen to the voice of the Lord communicating to us in so many different ways. And therefore today, let us try to see what the Lord communicates to us as we spend this time with Him. But most importantly, it is important for us to begin by thanking the Lord, by being grateful for all the wonderful gifts that we have received all the blessings He has bestowed on us. And let us begin by thanking the Lord for the gift of life. Lord, we thank you for giving us various gifts, talents and abilities. We also thank you, Lord, for the gift of our family members, friends, relatives and all those individuals who have played an important role in our lives. In some way, we are who we are because of the hard work, dedication of these individuals who have gone out of their way in order to help us grow and become better people. And Lord, as we spend this time with you, we also bring to you all our prayers, all our petitions. And now, let us reflect and meditate 
on Psalm 46. As always, we shall have a general overview of the Psalm and then we shall reflect on it in detail. Now, Psalm 46 is a powerful and uplifting passage of Scripture and this will encourage us to trust in the Lord no matter what challenges we may face in life. Now, the Psalm is traditionally attributed to the sons of Korah, a group of Levites who served in the temple and who were known for their musical abilities. And we see that overall, Psalm 46 is a beautiful and comforting psalm that reminds us of God's power, His presence and most importantly His protection. No matter what challenges we may face, we can always trust in the Lord knowing that He will take care of us, that He will protect us and most importantly He will not abandon us. So let us start reading today's psalm. The psalm begins, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. And here we see that the psalm itself will begin with the declaration of God's power and presence, stating that God is our refuge and strength. Now this statement in a way sets the tone for the entire psalm, emphasizing the idea that God is always with his people even in the midst of the most difficult circumstances. Verse 2 and 3 go as follows. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. And here we see that the psalm will go on to describe several different scenarios in which the people of God might find themselves. Now, in verses 2 and 3, the psalmist speaks of earth giving way and the mountains falling into the sea. Now, these images, in a way, are meant to convey a sense of chaos and destruction. But even in the midst of such upheaval, we see that the psalmist declares that God is still with his people God remains faithful to his people so that there is no need for the people to fear. The psalm continues. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the mountains and the mornings dawn. The nations are in an uproar, the kingdom's daughter. He utters his voice and the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Now here in verses 4 to 7, we see that the psalm shifts to a description of the city of God, which is a symbol of God's kingdom and his presence among the people. Now the psalmist describes how God protects the city and its people even in the face of enemy attacks. Now, the imagery that is shown over here is quite powerful and inspiring. And this, in a way, reminds us that God is our protector and our strength. In our lives too, we face various situations where things look difficult. And therefore, the psalm will invite us to have faith, to trust in the Lord, even in these most difficult moments of our lives. And we see that the psalm concludes, Come behold the works of the Lord, see what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes war cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations, I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us, the God of Jacob is our refuge. And here, my dear friends, we see that the psalm concludes with a call to all the people to recognize God's power and to be still in his presence. As we said earlier, God communicates to us in the silence of our hearts or through the people around us. 
And that is why it is important for us to see what the Lord is trying to tell us today. Either through the psalm or to the people or in the silence. Let us listen to the voice of the Lord. The psalmist writes, Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted on the earth. And here we see that this verse is very often quoted as a reminder to believers to take time and be quiet and reflect on the presence of God in their lives. My dear friends, as we have meditated on Psalm 46, let us now close our eyes at this morning hour and let us thank the Lord, let us praise the Lord, let us glorify the Lord. Loving Father, you have given us this time in the morning. You have been gracious to us. You have given us your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has cleansed us from our sins. He has taken away all our sins and has given us new life. Lord, as you have sent us the Holy Spirit, we ask you, Lord, to bless us and protect us. Lord, you have given us good health of mind and body. You have kept us safe. You have given us a good night's rest. For all this, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you. You have given us this time in the morning to spend with you, to reflect on the psalm. And for this, Lord, we are grateful to you. For your great love and mercy, O Lord, we praise you. We thank you, O Lord. You are merciful and you have blessed us in so many ways. Lord, we offer this day to you. Whatever we do today, may it be according to your will. Be with us, guide us, protect us, so that all our words and actions may radiate your love, joy and mercy to the world around us. My dear friends, let us now spend a few moments in silence, reflecting on Psalm 46. Let us try to recollect some verse that we liked, or maybe a thought that touched our hearts. And let us meditate and reflect over this verse or this thought. And let us allow the psalm to take root in our hearts, so that we too, may be able to place our faith and trust in the Lord so that even in the most difficult situations in our lives we may trust in Him and dedicate all our life to Him knowing that He will be there to guide us and protect us in every situation. Prayer to Saint Michael the Archangel for protection. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Act of Adoration O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Saint Gertrude Prayer for Souls in Purgatory 
eternal father i offer thee the most precious blood of thy divine son jesus in union with the masses said throughout the world today for all the holy souls in purgatory for sinners everywhere for sinners in the universal church those in my own home and within my family amen may the divine assistance remain always with us and may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of god rest in peace amen glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen